So let's start this chapter with Euler's theorem. And you can see here we have a cube represented two ways. On the left is an oblique drawing. And on the right, we can see perspective. And you can see on in this perspective drawing a 4x4x4 four by four by four cube, which clearly has six faces. And you can see the vertices or the corners. Count them. Four on the bottom, four on top. That's eight. And the edges. Four on the bottom, four on the top, and four vertical. That's 12. So you can see it obeying Euler's theorem there. And just a side note, you are going to be mostly working with oblique. And what that means when you're drawing on pencil and paper, I'm going to draw this square. This is the, the front face, and I'm going to push it or project it like that. Perhaps you call it extruding. And there you go. So there you have the first, the most ubiquitous of your platonic solids. Let's look at a few more. We'll look at another one of the platonic solids, also known as the regular polyhedra. And right in front of us, we've got the well-known tetrahedron. The drawing on the left static, but this one here we can see. I can see on the floor, or if I looked at it from the bottom, let's look at that green base. And I am looking at an equilateral triangle. And then I'm looking at another face. I'm looking at a red equilateral triangle, a yellow one. If I rotate all the way around, a blue one. So clearly I've got four faces, four equilateral triangles. I've got four vertices. I've got three on the floor and, and one hovering up there on the blue axis. And finally, I've got, let me see, there's every triangle's got three sides. So I've got three on the floor and I've got three more leading up to this vertex on the blue axis. And that makes for a total of six. Four plus four equals six plus two. So there you go. All of you in chemistry, you're familiar with this figure. That is our tetrahedron. And now for the octahedron, we are going to construct it. And, um, well, kind of construct it. And we'll just imagine that we're trying to draw a picture of a square. And this square, we're looking at it from an oblique angle. And I've got the center of the square over here. And imagine an axis passing through this. And then we could put in a couple, um, well, equilateral triangles above it. Vertex would be directly above the center like this. And um, I'm going to say, well, it looks like a triangular pyramid right now. It looks like a regular triangular pyramid, which it is. Um, and then we'll make a pyramid on the bottom as well. And this is the figure that we're going to say has eight faces. And let me see the vertices. Well, it's got four it's got four of them in this plane, and one on top and bottom, so that's going to be six. And I can see four edges on top, four edges on the bottom. So it does, again, obey Euler's theorem. So let's have a, a look at this one. Um, and again, this, it's tricky here. Is, see, this, this square is inside. This is not a surface. That's just um, used for constructing this figure. That's internal. It's, it does consist of eight equilateral triangles, making it regular polyhedra, again, a platonic solid. Let's shrink this guy up and move him over here so we can bring out another version. And this would be our SketchUp version. And again, as you can see, we've got the person in the middle. And I set it at 10 meters, so we've got our blue equilateral triangle. And below it, we've got an orange one. Um, she's standing on a plane, a 10 by 10 plane on the XY or the green-red axis. And I didn't finish the figure up because I thought we'd do that together. Let's move this thing around just a little bit. And you can see clearly one, two, three, four of these equilateral triangles and standing on this plane. And if we just wanted to spin that around, Spin it around just a little bit more. And let's just connect some of the dots here. Move her down just a wee bit. And let's draw from this vertex to here. And from here out to here. And that should complete 
our figure. So we again we would have the eight equilateral triangles. And let's just mention the dodecahedron and the isocahedron. As you can see um, on the left, 12 faces, uh, each of them a pentagon, and on the right, 20 faces. So we won't be doing a lot with these figures, but that rounds out our platonic solids. Well, let's apply Euler's theorem that we've just been looking over. Exercises 15 through 17 in your textbook. We've got three figures here. The tetrahedron, which we've already discussed. Clearly four, uh, one, two, three, four triangles. Uh, triangular faces, four faces. I see three on the bottom, one up here, four vertices, and six edges. We've discussed that before, and we can see four plus four equals six plus two. Well done. Square pyramid. Well, appears to be a square pyramid. We've got the two triangular faces visible and the two triangular faces in the background. Um, four triangular faces and the square on the bottom and the base, that's five faces. I see four vertices, four on the bottom and one up here, that's five. And there's four edges on the bottom, one, two, oops, three, four, and the four leading up to the vertex up top. That would be eight, and certainly that does also obey Euler's theorem. Five plus five equals eight plus two. Now this shape is a triangular pyramid, I'm sorry, triangular prism, excuse me, which means it's got a triangular base here and a triangular base here. So that's two of the faces, and of course that means there's going to be one, two face, and the third face would be in the background, and we can't see it from here. So three rectangular faces, two triangular faces for a total of five. Vertices, three down low, three up high, that's six. And the edges, let me see, for each triangle, there's three, there's three, four, five, six. And the three that connect the vertices, seven, eight, nine. So the edges would be nine. And once again, the faces five plus vertices six equals nine. That would be the edges plus two. And that's all there is to it. Well, let's look at the next three exercises, 18 through 20. All three of these are prisms. And we classify a prism, imagine, let's think of, um, we have a shape, in this case a triangle, a triangular base here and here. And it's projected into a depth, or if we were engineers, we'd say extruded. So we've got these sides here, one, two, uh, three rectangular sides, and these two bases, in this case, oops, triangular. So we can count, in this case, five faces for this triangular prism. Um, the vertices, well, I've got three here and three projected there, that's six. And of course, the nine edges, because as we can imagine, we've got three here, three here, and we've got three connecting these vertices for a total of nine edges. And again, obeying Euler's theorem. Next one, I've got a hexagonal shape here. It's drawn regular, but well, we don't really know if it's regular, but I've got one there and I've got one there. Imagine if I had a hexagon and I stretched it or extruded it. So I'd have those two hexagons and then I'd have on the side one, two, three, and I'd have six of these rectangles all the way around. So I'd have eight faces or surfaces. The vertices, well, I've got six here, and six pushed back on the second hexagon, that's 12. And the edges, again, I've got six edges on each of these two hexagons, that's six and six, that's 12, and another six this way, joining them for a total of 18 edges. And, again, faces plus vertices equals edges plus two. Now, the next figure looks is pretty interesting, this L shape here, uh, which is projected this way into a prism. Well, it's actually still a hexagonal prism. It's actually identical to this figure, as far as the Euler's theorem is concerned, because I, I look here, and I've got these two faces, 
And as far as on the side, I've got the one, two, th oh, three, four, five in the back and six on the bottom. I still have eight faces in the front six, in the back six. I've got 12 vertices and 18 edges. This is simply, this, well, this figure is concave. That is a concave hexagon, but it still has the same properties of a hexagonal prism. And you can see that this number, exercise 20. And our next exercise, we're going to look at a cube. I'm going to say we have a cube here, and we're going to pass a diagonal like this, cut through a plane, and see what kind of figure we generate. Well, clearly you can see from this perspective, it is a rectangle. So here we go with exercise 40, as we demonstrated in the other software. We've got a plane passing through this cube at the diagonal. So let's take this face here. I'm looking at a face right like this from the side and a diagonal looking like this. And I know that it's going to generate that cross-sectional area. That's a rectangle. And again, I can see that it's going to have a little bit different measures because each of the signs, going, this is going to be the same measure. This is the six inches. And I know that since that's the diagonal, that's going to be six radical two. So there's our measurements right there. So now, of course, if I want to know perimeter, the perimeter of this figure is going to be twice uh, the semi-perimeter. And I'll just leave it in that form. And the area, of course, will be the product of the length and the width. And there you have it. Remember, this inches, square inches.